All right, in this video, I'm just going to evaluate a piecewise defined function for a few different given values. And then also, we're just going to maybe think about for what x coordinates the, um, the function is increasing. And I think we can reason that out with actually even resorting to a graph. So, so again, all a piecewise function is, it's just a function that's broken up into pieces. So you can kind of think about, you know, there's multiple formulas. But again, for any particular x value, there's only one formula that you use. So notice if we start with an x value less than or equal to negative 2, we'll use the formula x plus 1. If we start with a value between negative 2 and 1, um, including 1 but not negative 2, it says you just get the value 3 out. And it says if you start with an x value that's greater than 1, we use the formula negative x squared. So if they want us, for example, to evaluate f of negative 4, again, I think, you know, what interval of numbers, where, where does negative 4 belong to? Well, negative 4 is less than or equal to negative 2, so I would be using this first interval, which means I would be using the first formula. So it says everywhere there's an x, just plug in negative 4. Well, negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. And that would be the value for f of negative 4. It would just be negative 3. Um, if we evaluate f of 0, if you, okay, so again, I have to find the interval, you know, which interval 0 falls into. Well, 0 is greater than negative 2, but less than or equal to 1. So now I'm going to use the second formula. There's really nowhere to throw an x in there, so it says you just get the value 3 out. So. Um, so easy it's confusing because there's, there's no arithmetic to actually do. And likewise, if I use an f of 4, well, okay, 4 falls into this last interval since 4 is greater than 1. So it says we'll get negative 4 squared. Be careful with your order of operations because we have to square first. So 4 times 4 is 16, and then we tack on our negative. And now we have the value for f of 4. So just the other question here, um, part B said, over what interval is the function increasing? Well, let's maybe think about the last two intervals here first. For the x-coordinates between negative 2 and 1, the y-value is always just 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, it stays 3 the whole time. So definitely the function's not increasing there, its y-values are staying fixed. For x greater than 1, you know, if you think about plugging in 2, 2 squared would be 4, but then we get negative 4. Um, so maybe let's plot points here a little bit just to help us keep, keep, uh, remind, remind, remind ourselves as to what's going on. So 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, we're, we're interested, again, as you move to the right, which would be increasing x-coordinates. What happens on the y-values? Notice if we plug 2 in, we would get negative 4, then negative 9, then negative 16, and then negative 25. So this tells me for this interval of x-coordinates, you know, from 2 to infinity, the function is actually decreasing. So it's not increasing over um, that interval. But if we, look at the sec if we look at the part x plus 1, if x, is l if x is less than or equal to negative 2, maybe let's use a few points. Um, so um, how about negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2? Well, if we were to plug these values in, it says just add 1 to them. So you would get negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1. And notice as the x-coordinates increase, they're getting bigger. As the x-coordinates increase, um, notice that the y-coordinates are also increasing. So to me, it looks like this very first part of the graph. That's, the, that's where the y-values will be increasing. So it says our function is going to be increasing for all x coordinates less than or equal to negative 2. And we can write that as negative infinity up to um, negative 2. We would say that's where the function is increasing.